Hi, I'm Ashley Briggs, and welcome to tonight's viewing of 60 Minutes. Tonight we have a special guest, Amelie Ivy No Other. Let's tune in with Jessica Smith as she interviews her. Hello, and welcome to this very special session of 60 Minutes. Today, we have a guest from the past. I will be speaking with the mathematician Emily Noether today. Welcome, Emily. We are glad you joined us. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. It's, it's so fascinating to come from the past to here. It's just oh, fascinating. I'm sure it is quite a shock for you to see all of this. Now, toward the end of your life, you lived in Pennsylvania, teaching for Bryn Mawr College, correct? Yes, yes. But that can't be where you're from. So tell us a little bit about where you're from. Well, I'm originally from Erlingen, Germany. And I was born on March 23rd, 1882. And my family is actually Jewish, which was a little fun when, you know, Hitler came around and we had the World War II and what have you. So it was a little exciting. Um, I'm the oldest of four. I had two brothers and one sister. And like every good German housefrau, my mother taught me and my sister how to um, take care of a household. And my father was a mathematician and he lectured at the local university. And my brothers followed in his footsteps and they decided to become mathematicians too. Well cool, let's talk about that for a bit. Now, your fathers and brothers influenced you to pursue a place in the mathematics world, right? Yes, they did. However, that was not always my plan. After I graduated from high school, I actually um, passed my examinations to teach French and English. And um, But, like you said, my brothers and my dad got to me and they influenced me and that I decided to um, actually pursue, I guess you would say, a career in the mathematics world, yes. Interesting. And how exactly did you start this pursuit, since it was hard for women to be active in the world of mathematics? Well, like I said, my father lectured at the local university, and he would allow me to help with some of his work, and sometimes substitute it every once in a while. Um, and I actually asked to join the university, but women were not allowed. However, one woman and I, we were allowed to audit some of the classes, which means we were allowed to sit in on some of the classes, but we didn't actually participate in the classes. And when I was finally admitted into the college, um, it was just, I, it was so, such a good feeling, such a good feeling. And I graduated and I did my dissertation with my good friend Paul Gordon. And after my dissertation, I was really able to focus on my research and teaching. Let's discuss your research a bit. I know you have uh, three epics, but that's all about my non-mathematical brain can take. Uh, oh my, oh my, my epics. My first epic was in 1908, right after I graduated, like I said. And it constituted of my most well-known work, which is called Noether's Theorem. And I'll do my best to summarize. Let's see. I basically dealt with the algebraic and variant theory, and I was actually able to continue Paul Gordon's um, work of proving the finite basis problem that was going around at the time. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, okay. So this is exciting. Um, he had the proof there. He just needed help carrying out the constructive approach for the invariance of three or more. And so um, that's when I came in, and the discovery greatly helped my friends David Hilbert and Felix Klein to better understand, this is so exciting, general relativity, which was a geometrical theory of gravitation that Einstein developed. Okay, then my second epic... Wait, 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 wait. You helped two people better understand Einstein? Uh-huh. How did that make you feel? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, we were all working together, and I did feel very, very accomplished because I was the youngest and I was a woman, but anyway, that's beside the point. I worked entirely from scratch on my second epic. The second one involved me discovering and proving the importance of the ascending and descending chain conditions. Basically, I came to the conclusion that every set of sub-objects have a maximal and minimal amount or 
that something complicated can be organized by a smaller number of elements. Okay. Now, for my okay. final epic, I worked with a group of men to form the theory of central simple algebras. This just means that a simple Central simple algebra over a field of K is a finite dimensional K algebra with center K and no non-trivial two-sided ideas. And that's it. Oh my, well, it was a lot to take in at once. Oh my, look at the time. Goodness, since you have shared your contributions to the world of math, let's ask one final question before you leave. How would you define Oh my, no one's ever asked me this before. This is exciting. Um, it's so much more than just numbers and forms to me. I believe that mathematics is a way of discovering new ideas and expanding upon ideas and just building on top of each other to prove or disprove theories that are going around and just a new way to see the world. Well, that about does it for today. Thank you for your time, Ms. Noether. Thank you. It was certainly enlightening. Oh, pleasure's all mine. See you next time when we talk with Christopher Columbus about his grand voyage to the New World.